of the Lord to all of you. Hallelujah. We're still celebrating Christmas and Christmas is a great time for the whole world and as you know Christmas is not about December or January or February. Christmas is about the Messiah. The King of Kings is born in earth. Otherwise the existence of the Messiah have nothing to do with the day of his birth. The Messiah is so clear before Abraham I am. And today we will discuss one more lie we see online these days in order to sponsor terrorism and terrorist and the antichrist the liars around the world they are willing even to change the identity of the messiah our lord and there is many they are accomplice in the terrorism and yet they claim to be christian ministers or priests in fact i want to warn you 
that the most ugly, disgusting antichrist people is those who call themselves priests. Now, for sure, not every one of them, but there's a lot of them. They are really the antichrist. And today we will show you an example of the antichrist. You know, I grew up in the Middle East, and I never heard one single Christian church speaking against Islam. Can you believe it? During the fasting days for the Christmas, we have 40 days of fasting. We go to church every day. 40 days. During the fasting for the Easter, we have 50 days. We go to church every day. This does not include Sunday. Yet, I never heard once in any of those Middle Eastern Christian churches one negative word against the faith of Islam. Do you know why? How many of you here are from the Middle East? How many of you is an Arab Christian or from Egypt or from Iraq or you are a Syrian or etc? Have you ever heard them saying anything? No. Never. The Muslims occupy their land. The Muslims took their churches. The Muslims raped their women. The Muslims took their children for slavery. It's enough to read the Pact of Umar. When Omar, he entered Jerusalem, what he did to the Christians, he made us ride donkeys in the opposite direction. He made us carry a cross a man cannot carry, even if he's Hercules. He made us shave our hair to look funny and stupid. He forced Christians to open their houses and their doors to any Muslim to sleep and eat and drink for three days without even asking him why you are here. He go to your bedroom. He sleep between you and your wife three days, three nights. They never mention it. So where we learn this? Where we learn about the genocide against Christians in the Middle East? Why our Christian ministers, our priests, never mention it? Because they are dogs. Because they are cowards. Because they are filthy. Because they are satanic. If you go to Orthodox Church and you say the word Protestant, all of them, they are lions. If you go to the word, a church, a Catholic Church and you say the word Orthodox, all of them, they are lions. And the same for the Protestant. The second you say Islam, they are rats. You know what rats mean? They are rats. They don't talk about it. Don't, don't talk about it. Don't. Do you know that every single church in Israel right now, the keys of it is in the hands of Muslims? Do you know? Do you know that the most holy church where the Messiah was crucified, the key of that church is in the hand of Muslims? Do you know? Until now. When the last time you heard a Christian complaining, and I'm talking about Christian from those churches, Never. They don't dare. Cowards. Filthy scumbags. So the Muslims are controlling them, destroying them, committing genocide against the Christians. This is the land used to be 100% Christians. What happened? What happened to Gaza? It used to have more than 300,000 Christians. Now there's less than 3,000. And they are talking about genocide. Who is the one who made the 300,000 Christian 3,000 Christians? Is it the Jews or the Muslims? Do you see why we don't respect those men in the Middle East? Do you see even why their churches are empty? Yes, their church is empty. Who's going to listen to those people? Nobody. Nobody. 
Look at this. I will use Google Translation for you so you can understand what I'm going to show you. <laughs> Just to show you the scam back of so-called Palestine. I will just use Google Translation. Just to give you an example of what we are talking about. Christian clerics demonstrate in church of nativity in the protest against insulting the prophet of Islam. Can you believe it? Did they not do the same for the Muslims insulting Jesus every day saying he's nobody? saying that Muhammad is going to F Mary. But the Christians in Palestine, the leaders, they protest against insulting the prophet of Islam who raped a war woman, who says kill the Christians, who says force them to pay just like dogs, who said to them that they are pigs and monkeys and filthy and kuffar and liars. Those are the one you call them Christians. A bunch of scumbag protesting what <laughs> it's hard to believe isn't it it's hard to believe but this is reality they have history of betraying Jesus they have history of being Antichrist why in the world anyone who read the gospel and he claimed to be a Christian minister, he protests insulting Muhammad? Isn't it the Bible says whoever denied the father and the son, he is an antichrist? So you are protesting against the antichrist or for the antichrist? Oh, you are supporting the antichrist. And today we have this scumbag. This guy, he have a message for you. What is the message? Shall we hear it? Okay. Despite the immense blow we have endured, we the Palestinians will recover. Uh -huh. We will rise. Mm -hmm. We will stand up again from the midst of destruction, mm -hmm. as we have always done as Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Although this is by far maybe the biggest blow we have received in a long time. Right, it right. It will be okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But for those who are complicit, I feel sorry for you. Uh -huh. Will you ever recover from this? Really? So you whore, you son of Muta, you Sharmuta. Sorry, I have to use that word. You are a Sharmuta. You are a hooker. Would you recover to tell us what happened to Christian girls kidnapped by Muslims in Gaza and they unforced into Islam? Would you recover yourself? Where you been? Where you been when the Muslims took our churches and made them mosques? Where you been when the Muslims go to our graveyards and destroy them and build a mosque in the top of it? Where you been, you filthy coward, when they kidnap Christian girls at the age of 8 and 10 and they say they say Shahada and you convert them to Islam? Where you been? Where you been, you whore? Where you been when the Muslim terrorists occupy our holy church in Bethlehem and they start doing poo poo in it? And guess what? The Israeli army did not enter the church, even though they can do it in five minutes. Where you been? They piss on the cross. They found poo poo everywhere in the mass room. Where you been? The cowards, the terrorists, the Muslim terrorists, they enter our holy church and they use it as a poopo room. And the Israeli, because they are so bad, they did not enter it for the sake of respect of the Christians. Otherwise, they can get in in two minutes. Where have you been?
I have to use a strong language because nothing can describe those people except filthy words, including hookers. Those are hookers. Those are no Christians. This is come back. Look what he did in the church. He put Jesus. He said, if Jesus was to burn now, to be born now, he will be under the rubble. Well, let me tell you the bad news, your son of Muta. If Jesus was born now, he would be kidnapped by Hamas. Is it according to Quran, Muhammad? Quran, Jesus is a Jew. How many children in the age of Jesus they were kidnapped a few weeks ago? How come you did not mention them? Do you think of Hamas? They found Jesus in the cradle and they learned that his mother is a Jew. They will not kidnap him. So they were kidnapping the babies for what reasons? The only reason they are Jews. Do you see the coward? Do you see how they lie to you? This, do you see how they fool you? Do you see why we don't respect them? Do you see why we shit on them? Those are not a priest. Those are a piece of shit. Those are hookers. If you are a priest of God, you should mention and say, shame on you, Hamas, to kidnap children, infant, like Jesus, and take them underground and use them as a war tool. But you have no shame. You have no dignity. You are a whore, like your mama. Even though I do not know her, but obviously she is a whore like you. If Jesus is born today, he will be burned under the rubble. But who is the one who did the rubble? How come you did not see the house of the Jews being burned, the women being raped, the children being kidnapped, even dogs they kidnapped them? Can you believe it? They even kidnapped dogs. They even kidnapped coffee machine. I saw a Palestinian like you kidnapping a toilet seat. Look like this toilet seat, he was a Jew and he was a rabbi. You are a thief like them. And let me tell you why you are supporting Hamas. Because, you know, if you insult the Israeli, they will not kidnap you. If you speak against them, they will not harm you. But if you mention one word against the garbage of Hamas and Islam, you will be disappearing. Period. So you said to yourself, ah, let me attack the Jews. That will make me famous. And at Jazeera TV, we will welcome me. And now you say every terrorist in the world praising this good Christian man. He's a good Christian. He don't remember what, what Muhammad did to the Christians. He don't remember what Hamas did to the Christians. He don't remember. Do you know that the president of so-called Palestine, when Erdogan, he converted our church, Aya Sophia, into a mosque. Do you know he is the first man who sent the King graduation letter to Erdogan? Did this guy open his mouth, say shame on you? Did this guy dare to say to so-called the president of Palestine, Abbas, shame on you to send such a letter. He just made our church a mosque. You don't dare. For you are a whore. You are a whore and a son of a whore. And you are no priest. And this is telling you that all of them are a scumbag. Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, it doesn't matter. There is a priest like those in every church. The Pope, the Pope is crying for Palestine. He's so sorry for Palestinian. He's, he wants peace. What a piece of shit you are. How come you don't cry for the babies of the Jews? How many Christians been killed when Hamas attack Israel? In October 7, do you cry for them? No, no, he does. It's okay, it's okay. You are not the Pope, you are a poop. 
all of you are a piece of shit. Protestant, Orthodox, Catholic, there is a priest like those, who they are the priest of the devil. And we are here to expose them. Orthodox is no better. This is why I say to you always, don't go by the name of those churches. You will be so disappointed. Those are churches, many inside them, they are worms. They are satanic. They are like Muhammad. That's why I say to you, don't say I'm Protestant. Don't say I'm a Catholic. Don't say I'm Orthodox. Say I'm a follower of Jesus. Do you want someone like this to present you? Do you want the Pope who just give a blessing for the same sex marriage? And he says, this is not against the Bible. Do you want that? Never join any of those groups. You join only Jesus. For as you see, there are a bunch of love. If this guy, he have little dignity, he should say, well, if Jesus is born today, Hamas will kidnap him because he's born of the Jews. This is reality. And this is the truth. When the last time the Jews, they come to the house of the Palestinian and they kidnap a child, he is eight months old. Can you name one? Don't mention names in the chat here for somebody, anyone else. You like my, uh, my program, you are welcome. You are here to talk about other names, I will block you. We don't want your drama. We have enough garbage to talk about. When the terrorists of so-called Palestine, they occupy the church of Bethlehem, where the Lord, the Messiah was born, what they were doing inside? Go check it out. They found that they were pissing on the cross. They found that they have poo-poo. They used to poo-poo under the cross just to insult Jesus. Forty days. And the Israeli army did not even knock at the door just because they don't want to insult the Christians. Imagine if that happened in the Middle East. The Muslim army, they will take the whole church off the ground in a second. Ah, hold on. Just less than 24 hours ago, Hezbollah attacked a church in the north of Israel. What you majesty said about it, if there is any Christian in Israel spoke up against that? No. Why? How come when a bomb fell in a side of a church, in the parking spot of a church, you have a big mouth. But when Hezbollah attack a church just less than 24 hours, Orthodox church, Anyone talking about it? Nobody. Why? Oh, you know, the Muslims have license to destroy churches. Right? So, you know, it's their right. And then when a, when a, when a group of Israeli soldiers come to rescue the Christians, Hezbollah attack another time for the second time with second missile to the same church. Did you hear anyone talking about it? Nobody. Those are a bunch of scumbag. Those are not priests. Those are hookers. Those are sex toys in the anus of Muhammad. Nobody listened to them. This is why their churches are empty. 
This is why nobody respect them. If somebody is saying the truth, no Muslim will praise him. You know, the second you hear a Muslim saying, what a great man this man is, that means this man is a scumbag. Do you understand? If you see Muslim saying, may Allah bless your Christian prince. That's awful. That's obvious that the Christian prince is not good no more. Do you agree? If you read the comment about what this man is saying, you will see how much the Muslims support him. Suddenly the Muslims are like amazed by the priest. This is a good priest. They make fun of you. They call you kuffar. They call you filthy. You have to pay jizya. You have to be humiliated. They make fun of your Jesus. They make fun of your Bible. Just say support Hamas. You are a good man now. They forgive everything. That's it. There's no problem. We don't respect them in the Middle East. We spit at them. They are businessmen. They have no dignity. They are like Muhammad, a bunch of hookers. All what they care for is how to get their paid, live in a nice houses, and society praise them. They will not dare to say the truth. Because the truth means a lot of a trouble. The truth means humility. The truth means they will be arrested. The truth means they will be killed. So what we do? We side with the terrorist. The Israeli, they will not kill us. We can shout at them as much as we want. We can spit at them. They will not arrest us. And in fact, if they arrest them, they arrest us, that will make us look even better in the eyes of terrorists. So what they do, they take the side of the one who can harm, not the one who will not. Which one can harm us? If the Israeli, by the way, they change their tactic and they do what Hamas do, this guy, he will switch. I'm telling you, if Israel now took over Gaza, all of it, and they kill anyone who speak against Israel, this guy, he will support Israel. They are hookers. They are filthy. Did you, can you tell us, please, about how the churches in Gaza, they become like shrinking by number? I mean, what happened? What happened? How come there is 2 million Muslims in Gaza and only 3,000 Christians? Like, what happened? Do you think the Christians are going to Mars? Who is the one is erasing them? Don't you think it's so fishy that Gaza used to be 100% Christians and now there's only less than 3,000? Hmm? Do you think the Jews killed them? What do you think is happening? What a filthy scumbag you are. The reality is, if Jesus was to be born again now, Hamas will kidnap Jesus. For a very simple reason, he is born of a Jewish woman. This is the truth. So this guy, he remembered the rebels, but he don't remember who is the one causing the rebels. He don't remember the children who they are kidnapped just because they are Jews. He forgot who is Jesus. And by the way, some of you very silly people, you know, they keep saying Jesus is a Jew, Jesus is a Jew. Jesus is a Jew by birth, but he is not a Jew. He is the God of the Jews. It's very silly, actually, to say that statement. Either you believe that Jesus is God or you believe he is a Jew. Which one you believe? Isn't it Jesus says before Abraham I am? Which means before any Jew is to come to existence. 
Don't you believe that Jesus, before the whole world was created, the Messiah was there with the Father? So don't say the word Jesus is a Jew. By birth, yes. But he is not a Jew. He is the God of the Jews. But by birth, Hamas will kidnap him. For he's born of a woman. Her name is Mary. So if Hamas, they came. In the time where Jesus was born. They will kidnap Jesus. Yes, they will. And they will rape Mary. Yes, they will. And that is reality. Prove me wrong. This priest, he have only selective memory. He don't see everything. Don't blame him. His memory is weak. I mean, he did the study a lot, and he learned a lot of history. But he remembered every history except his history. What a filthy scumbag you are. Those are the Israeli kidnapped by Hamas. And many they were killed. Look, Hamas, he just found Jesus. Look how nice he is. He carried Jesus. He hugged him. They are very nice people. So we go to their houses, we kidnap them from their family, we rape the women, we kill the men. And all of this doesn't count for you. You remember that if Jesus was to be born now, he will be in the rubble, you son of Muta. You whore. You are a whore. You are a whore. And nothing can describe you than, better than this world. As you know, I don't sugarcoat things. And I speak a language many of you don't like to hear. But who cares? Who care what you like to hear? I don't. I say things as it is. In fact, we are sick of people sugarcoating things. We are sick that we have a priest don't dare to be priest. We are sick of a priest don't dare to say and to read a verse from the Bible because they will offend somebody. We are sick of them. Enough is enough. Those people make us sick. It's time for us as a Christians to speak out. Don't let the sick take over you. They are filthy dogs. They are the servant of the devil. They are child molesters, like Muhammad. I mean, don't you say that the Christian leaders, they protest against insulting prophet of Allah? What? Yes, brother. You can make cartoon of everybody, but not by Prophet Muhammad. The Muslim, they make Ramadan, go Ramadan, and see how they make fun of our churches. They make uh, the Christians are a bunch of uh, drunk people. Their women are hookers. The bishop is a cheater. And the Muslims are angels.
Go watch Ramadan. The whole month is nothing but insult to the Christians and the Jews. Every series in TV, every program is about the Christians are filthy and the Muslims are very, very decent. When all of us renew that Aisha, she was a whore. She used to decorate women so she can hunt young men of Quraysh, as their book says. When all of us renew that even the Muslims accuse Aisha that her legs was always open and her vagina was a garage with no parking ticket. When all of us renew that Muhammad himself is nothing but a sex offender, child molester, rapist, kidnapper. The Christian leaders in Palestine, they demonstrate anger against insulting the prophet of Islam. How dare you to insult the prophet of Islam? Dozens of Christians and Muslim cleric, a number of Palestinians st staged a site in Wednesday evening in the courtyard of the church. Look, look, look how filthy, look how disgusting those so called priests in Palestine. In the church where the Holy Lord was born, what they are doing? They are supporting the Antichrist. Do you see why we don't respect them? They are scumbags, literally. They are filthy. They are fake. They are rats. Just tell them where is the cheese. And remember carefully, there's a lot of great, wonderful Christians in Israel, some who they are supposedly Palestinians, we are not talking about those. We are talking about those priests. When the Bible says it clearly, be aware of false teachers. When the Bible speaks clearly, about those who promote sexual immorality. Those are sexual immorality. This is kind of sexuality. They are sleeping with the devil. Those people, they are sleeping with the devil Muhammad. They are in bed with him. They are practicing sexual immorality. They are fornicators. If this man have little dignity, shouldn't he say to them, shame on you, Hamas, at least give the people, those people, their babies? How come? Like your dignity is not activated if it is about a child, he is a Jew, or a child, is a Christian. But your dignity is so activated if a house of member of Hamas still collapse. Because Hamas member is under the house and he's shooting at them from the house or from the hospital or from the you know from a church. We don't respect them. You see, there is a Christian uh, Kutik Christian, I'm, I'm sure many of you heard of him. His name is Father Zechariah. Do you know what they say about Father Zechariah? They say he don't present the Christians in the Middle East. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, he don't present Christians in the Middle East. Why? What happened? What happened? Oh, he insulted Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> really? See, what happened when one of us is a good man? They spit at him. They claim he is a bad person. He is not a true Christian. If he is a scumbag like them, they will praise him. If he is a hypocrite, 
if he's a liar. But how many of them? You know, sometimes I ask myself, where, where are those Christians in the Middle East who they are priests? Like when they are going to speak against Islam, exactly what is their job? What they do for a living? Why we cannot find them? Are you find them when they give you their hand to kiss it? You find them when they ask you for donation. But if a man, he's a good man, he said the truth, they wash their hands from He don't present Christianity. He's a false man. All of this because he said the truth. Why Muslims don't praise this guy? I mean, this guy is a priest and the other guy is a priest. <laughs> but because this guy is in the truth, nobody like him. And when I say nobody, I mean them, not us. You know, the Muslims, they occupy Egypt. Do you know why until now they occupy Egypt? Because the scumbag in the church, the church leaders, they did not allow the Coptic Christians to revolt and free their land from the occupation of Muslims. 1400 years of occupation. No Christian, in fact, they threatened them. If you revolt against the Islamic occupation, we will not even pray in your funeral for you. Can you believe it? The church has threatened their own citizen that you should not revolt against Islamic occupation. Do you know why until now they are occupying Egypt? Do you know why until now the Christians in Egypt, they have no rights? Do you know why until now the Christian in Egypt, they are being kidnapped, raped, tortured, killed? Because the church leaders are accomplice in the crime. They are satanic. They don't want people to be free. The leader of the church, she will be invited by the president to a lunch and dinner as long he is a friend with the president. What do you want more? You don't care for the rest of the people. Women being kidnapped, children being kidnapped, women being raped, churches being burned. It doesn't matter for them. The Middle Eastern so-called church leaders, most of them, they are antichrist people. They are satanic like Muhammad. They are filthy. They are trashy. They are partner with the devil Muhammad. Just because they want to live safe. Why churches don't want to invite me to do seminars? Why they invite Muslims to teach about Islam in their church? Do you know why? Because they are satanic. Literally. Grace saying, I understand your frustration, but I don't think compromising always mean hypocrisy. They could be under a threat. Well, I am under a threat too. <laughs> hey guys, look like Peter was not under a threat. Look like Paul was not under a threat. Look like the disciple of Jesus, they were not under a threat. So Paul and Peter and John and all the disciples of Jesus, they should compromise with the devil because they are under a threat. You see how false what you are saying, Grace? Are you satanic like them? Are you trying to find a way for the devil to get out? 
they compromise. What they compromise exactly? The Bible? What the Lord he said? Or the spirit and the soul and the blood of the Christians? If this is not hypocrisy, so what is hypocrisy? So Jesus must, should compromise too. Look, they want to crucify him. They said to him, are you the one who say he is a son of God? Jesus should say, no, no, I did not. Uh, this is a threat. No, 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 I did not. I did not. No, who said that? Not me. Do you see the weak spirit? Do you see the evil? Do you see how they promote their faith and they promote their guilt and they give always excuse to their crimes? So now we are in a time where ever we're promoting homosexuality. Oh, we should compromise because if you speak against us, you might go to jail. Oh, we have to compromise. We cannot offend somebody. You are no Christian. You are a potato. Go compromise. You know, the compromise culture between the Christians is what leads us to what we have today. You know, like a Christian don't want to talk about Jesus. No, he's shy to talk about Jesus. He's shy to say I'm a Christian because he's afraid to offend somebody. He's shy to say fornication is wrong because they will be offending everybody. Everybody is fornicating. We have to compromise. What compromising means simply that you sold yourself to the devil. Those people are false people. And the more you compromise, are you going to stop there? No, they will ask you for more compromise. And now they are going to change the gender of your babies. Imagine your son is born as a boy. They want to com convince him that he is a girl and they will give him hormone. Compromise. Go ahead, go ahead, compromise more. They convince the women that she is a man and the man he is a girl. Even statues now should not have a penis. I mean, historic statues for 2,000, 3,000 years, oh, it's an insult for them to have a penis because it's an insult in the transgender. Compromise. We are here to share the truth. And we are not here to compromise. Those who compromise, they compromise with the devil. And they are devilish. How to respond to the question why Jesus say, not his but the Father will? Well, I don't know why that is a problem. Jesus said the father. Isn't it what Islam says that there is no father? So the verse confirmed that the son, he submit his will to the father. What's wrong with that? Why is Jesus called the father of the father? If the father is not the one who is in charge. So why he call him the father? She should call him brother then. People are silly and stupid. The word father has a reason. Jesus is born of the father, not the father is born of Jesus. Therefore, Jesus is always obedience to the father. Where is the problem? So God the son, he said to God the father, let your will be done. You send me to do the work. You gave me the authority. Jesus keeps saying that. So what the problem? Everything I have is given to me from you, Father. So how come we remember only that sentence? We don't remember the rest. Weak-minded, weird people, low IQ, they don't want to see. 
The one who asked those questions, obviously, he did not know even what Christianity believed. Christianity believed that God the Father sent God the Son, not the opposite. So the Son is always obedient to the Father, and there's no question about it. Going back to our topic. Those kind of scumbags, we should fight them and expose them. And now I want you to listen to me carefully. Sunday, Saturday is coming soon. You go to your church. You ask your minister few questions. If the answer is correct, you stay in the church. If the answer is wrong, you leave it and you spit at those who they are teaching there. Not necessarily in a physical way. You ask your priest, what do you think about Islam? If he say to you, God love everybody. God love the Muslims. God is merciful. Abdul, listen, potato, potato, priest, priest, potato, huh? Mm, what a boy. I did not ask you if Jesus loved the Muslims or not. I'm asking you, what do you think about Islam? And then he will repeat, brother, Jesus, he came for all mankind. Jesus loved everybody. It's, it's you, you stupid idiot. Stop telling me about Jesus loving everybody. We know that. This is not the question. I'm asking you, what do you think about Islam? Islam is a religion. Islam is not people. What do you think about Islam? Why you don't want to answer? If you don't dare to say Islam is false and Muhammad is a scumbag, child molester, sex offender, kidnapper, a criminal, this man is no priest. Second question, homosexuality. Hey priest, what do you think about homosexuality? Oh, Jesus love everybody. Look, what the heck? Again, listen, I'm not asking you Jesus love who and he hate who. We got it. What do you think about homosexuality? Well, God, he forgive everybody. And God is merciful to... Like, you donkey, you donkey, you idiot, you son of... What's wrong with you? You as a priest, what the Bible says about homosexuality, they don't want to answer. They don't want to answer. They don't want to read the verses. For they are hookers. Those are not priests. Those are satanic. So you go to your church and you ask the so-called priest, because we want to see if he's a priest or not. He's a priest of Jesus or he's a priest of the devil. Do you think Islam is Abrahamic? If he say yes, fart at him. Tell him how. Tell him you are an idiot in his face. Can you show me a verse in the Bible confirm that? Muhammad God, his name is Allah. Can we find Allah in our book? Oh, in the Arabic translation for the Bible, there's a, this is stupid translation, have nothing to do with us. Secondly, our God is a spirit. Their God is not. Number three, their heaven is full of sex. Our heaven has zero sex. If we have the same God, we should have the same nature of God. If we have the same God, their God should be spirit at least. If we have the same God, we should have the same heaven. Not a heaven where penis is a dropping semen and the other one is holy. You have to corner them and you have to expose them. If the priest is not willing to give you the correct answer, he is the priest of the devil. Ask everybody in the front of him to leave. Tell him this guy is a fraud. 
Don't be shy. Otherwise, you are accomplished with the plan of the devil. Look at this guy. You know, he's dressing nice, a suit. I mean, so Gaza is collapsing and you are wearing a suit. Shouldn't you wear like a uniform to clean the dust? So what do you do? You bring some rocks from the outside and you put them inside the church because you're supporting Hamas? Well, you don't go on fire with Hamas. Hey, by the way, what's your opinion about kidnapping some, you know, Israeli kids? Do you think this is a good business? Do you think Jesus will forgive us if we do that? What do you think about raping some Jewish women too? I think Jesus loved everybody. He loved the rapists too, right? I mean, do Jesus love Hamas when they rape kids? For sure, for sure. I, you know, yeah, he loved them. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. What a scumbag you are. Don't let those fools fool you. They are evil. They are sold out to the devil. They have nothing to do with Jesus. People of Jesus, they say the truth. How many times I spoke against so-called rabbi? I do, right? I do. I don't take a side. I say the truth. When a Jewish rabbi, he say lies about Jesus, we wipe the floor with him. With no mercy. But that doesn't mean we forgot what the Bible says, that this is the land of the Jews. And then the other lie. Jesus is a Palestinian. Really? So why the stupid Quran said that Allah, he sent him to the Jews? Huh? Why Allah, he says that? <laughs> you know, not to forget to mention that the Quran do not know what the name of Jesus is. But anyway, uh, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, if you go in the Quran, you will find the Quran speaking a lot about the person whose name is Isa. When Allah, he sent the Isa, he sent him to Bani Israel, the children of Israel. And this can be found all over the Quran. As an example, chapter 5, verse 110. And the funny is, that Allah, he taught Isa the Torah and the Injil, but he did not teach him the Quran. If, 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 if. It turned to be the Muslim Isa is ignorant about the Quran. Look like the Quran is not needed at that time. One of the funny stories about Isa in the Quran, that once his disciples, they were hungry. So disciples, they said to him, hey, listen, Isa, we want seven sandwiches from the sky. So Allah, he received call from Isa. Isa, he says to him, oh, Allah, our Lord, send us uh, from heaven sandwiches. And these sandwiches can feed the first, uh, first one and the last one. And then Allah, he sent seven sandwiches. Each one of them have a whale. And you know, all of us, we knew that John, he ate a lot. He ate, ate, ate a whole whale alone. John alone. He took the first whale like, what? Like, we, the whale is just like, I don't know how many thousand tons of kilograms, you know. But John was so angry. Seven whales in seven sandwiches. True story. What make it more funny, that those stories, you know, uh, they can be found only in the Quran. Yeah, yes. Hmm? And then the stupid Quran, Allah asked him, asking Isa, hey Isa, did you tell people to worship you and your mom? And this is where the story, the song, Oh Mommy, coming from. So Isa says to Allah, Oh Mommy, Oh Mommy, Mommy Blue, what are you talking about? I did not say that. The stupid God of Islam, he think 
the Christians, they have a trinity, which is God the Father, God the Wife, and God the Son. This is how stupid Muhammad is. He doesn't even know what the trinity is. He thinks the Christian believe that there is a God, the Father, he married God, the wife, Mary, and they have a baby, his name is Isa. And the drama continues. The Messiah who was sent to the Jews as we see in chapter 61 verse number 6 he, he is listen so are you sure the Quran is not wrong I thought Isa is a Palestinian the Quran in front of us says that Allah sent him to the Jews because he's a Jew ah. look like the Quran is corrupt Ah, the Quran is written by the Zionist. And by the way, Mohammedans, how come the Zionist Quran never mentioned the word Palestine? Can anyone explain to me? Do you think Allah dropped that word by mistake or there is a conspiracy between Allah, Zionist, and the Zionist of today? Hmm. Another idiot asking question, did Catholic Church start Islam? I mean, where are those people coming from? You see the word diarrhea exists for a reason. Guys, did the Catholic Church start Islam? So who is the crusade, you donkey? The Catholic Church started Islam. Are you sure? What your mom, she gave you for lunch? This is the donkeys we have in the world today. The Catholic Church is the one who started Islam. Look like the crusade, they were Chinese. And they were not Catholic. What I would do with myself? I mean, when the Chinese, they said he left as a donkey, never come back as a horse. They, we are talking about somebody. I'm not sure who. You tell me. In which denomination are you? Which one is yours? Yours is Nick Jam channel? Well, I am a follower now of Nick Jam channel. Look how stupid, how silly they are. What domination? You see, the problem is that those who claim to be Christians and they follow domination, they are not following Jesus. I say to anyone who say I'm Catholic, I am Orthodox, I am Protestant, I say to you, you are stupid. If you are true Christian, you say I am following Jesus. You don't mention those names. Jesus never mentioned them. They have nothing to do with him. A true Christian, he don't care for a priest. He don't care for a bishop. He don't care for a pope. He care only for Christ. We have enough donkeys in this earth. And the enemy of a Christ, they take advantage of those donkeys to rode and ride on them. Do you remember the story of the genies, the black genies who they are naked and they rode Muhammad? Azot, who remember it? Anyone remember the Zot? The story of the Zot? The name Zot is funny, huh? A bunch of black men, they were so tall and naked to the point each one of them, their penis is like 45 centimeter. Some story says 46 centimeter, to be honest with you. And they rode in the top of Muhammad. Muhammad, he claimed that those Zot, who they are naked black men, they are genie. This is why their penis is so big. I mean, have you ever heard of a man, his penis is 46 centimeter? I mean, this is almost the size of my arm. What the heck? And what is making me really think about it in a weird way, imagine those Zot, Rodin on Muhammad and their penis is coming in front of his mouth. I mean, it's 46 centimeters coming down and they are on the top of his shoulder. Anyway, don't think about it for now. Just erase the image from your head. Yeah, yeah, erase it, erase it. The Zut. The Zut is Zut. So those people, they go around and they lie and they say that Jesus was a Palestinian. Why? He's born in Bethlehem. Really? <laughs> Abdul, this is the land of Israel anyway. And Bethlehem is not where Jesus is from, you idiot. 
He was born there, but he's not from there. Petito. You know, stupidity is kind of a, like a, I don't know, what they call it, pandemic these days. You see a woman, she have a ring in her nose, ring in her ear, ring in her eyebrows, ring in her toes, ring in her lips. I mean, rings everywhere. But there's, after all those rings, nothing ring the bell in her head to go and read who is Jesus. So she learned about Jesus from TikTok. The holy book of TikTok says that Jesus is Palestinian. TikTok chapter 22 verses number CCCS panty picnic uh, pinky or whatever. And you will see a woman with big boobs in TikTok. Hello everybody. Today I'm going to tell you a discovery that I found that Jesus is Palestinian. Oh, hold on, my nipple is... Sorry, I have to scratch it. Sorry. Okay. Now let's go back to the topic. Excuse my nipples. Yesterday my boyfriend was playing with them all night. I, I, I mean my dog. Sorry. He's a, my boyfriend is a dog. You know these days you cannot find real men no more. Yeah, he's a blue dog. Blah, 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 dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He bite a lot. Anyway, going back to the topic. I discovered yesterday that Jesus is a Palestinian. And uh, by the way, uh, he speak Arabic. Yes, and his last name is Hamas. Yeah, because he was encouraging people to join the resistance. What a stupid people. Those are the ones who will get information from. Those are the ones who want to teach you. The books is there. Even the dogs, Muhammad, even the dog Muhammad, his book saying Jesus was sent to the children of Israel. It's in the front of you. Potatoes. You know, I was thinking today to open my Skype to take note, to take uh, calls. Uh, but there is some of you, they are annoyed with the uh, uh, Skype uh, ring. You know, so one of you says, please, 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 Christian Prince, when you receive a caller from uh, Skype, please mute it. It make a horrible noise at the house. Look what we are talking about and look what those people are. You know, you never heard of something called a mute. Mute it from your side. Potatoes. He covered CP, debate me. In five minutes, black each, I dare you. Okay, Mushir, okay. I'm going to open Skype just for you, Mashir. Can you call me? Guys, uh, Mashir, he want to debate me. I, I, I was just saying I'm not going to open Skype, but you know what? I have to take you for a snack. Call me, Mashir. My Skype is open. Call me. If you don't, that means you're afraid that you will lose your virginity if you call me, like your prophet Muhammad. Isn't this the reason you will not call? Prove me wrong. This is my Skype. Only Muslim for now. All right, see it? Very easy. You click at the link, you call me, and I will send you free shipping and hand it into Allah. Do it. Who oh there? Any Abdul? All right, we go back to our topic until the Abdul scratch his testicle, call his friends, contact Zachary Naik, asking for help. Chris and Prince, first of all, if I want to debate you, throw thee. But the problem, I don't have my teeth with me today. Zachary Naik, you don't have teeth anyway. Since when you have teeth? 
And what have indeed had to do with debating me? All what you need is your balls. Do you have any? Great impress. I go to study in the pan. I have big balls. Zachary Naik, if you have big balls, so why you run away from India? Great impress. The old Hindu, they are looking for me to crush my balls. What? Crush your balls? But can you have balls? They cannot crush it. You just said your balls is so big. So you run away from India because they want to crush your balls? Come on, Allah will support your balls. Or you think he will not? So who is a Muslim here have balls to call us? Hmm? Anyone? Let us look at the Skype to see if there is any Muslim have balls. The only text I see is a Sajid. Sajid what? Don't text me. Bring the guys who want to debate me. <coughs> Another question. Guys, only Muslims, only Muslims. Only Muslims. Where are you, uh, Mashari, Shari, Badari? You know, uh, Mashari, I want to convert to Islam, man. Just for a very simple reason. I convert to Islam. Your father, he divorced her three times. I married her to do nikah to her. And then you will call me stepfather. I mean, do you see how much open-minded Islam is? The Muslim woman, she got divorced by her husband. She can't get back to the husband unless someone like me F her. Should I open an F in office to do service for Muslim women? Like you divorce them, we F them, you go back to them? How much you pay us? Do we need a special permit or license for that business? By the way, it's halal. Hmm? What happened to you? You are texting in the chat. I want you to call me, you idiot. So all this time you want to text me, you want to call me, you want to debate me, I challenge you. We open sky for you and then you do nothing. Potato. All right. All right, we have some Christians texting me again. Shall we take some call from Christians? As long as there's no Abdul? What do you think, guys? Or maybe maybe tomorrow we continue taking calls from Christians. Any Muslim have anything to, to say for us? Anyone? Hmm? Any Muhammadan want to give us some advices? You know, why Prophet Muhammad he never received Quran unless he wear his wife's clothing? What is the connection, you think? Hmm. <coughs> Anyone knows? Nobody? Okay. I mean, my question is very simple. I'm sure all Muslims can answer it. Okay, another question. Forget about this question. Why Allah have a shin? And what will happen to the shin of Allah if Allah now in Gaza? Do you think the Jews will take his shin as a shin of evidence? What is the proof that your God Allah is exist? Is it his shin? It is anything else. What about fingerprints? I heard he have five fingers in each hand. The funny, the Muhammadan, they say to us that we worship a man. His name is Jesus. But they don't worship a man. They worship an idiot. He is a shin. He have five fingers in two hands. Each one, and both hands are in the right side. How you build an argument that nikah is not marriage? Very simple. 
Muhammad he says when your wife she have menstruation do everything ex do, do everything with your wives except nikah <laughs> so if nikah is marriage what do you do if nikah is marriage he's saying if they have if your wives have menstruation do with them everything except nikah so what nikah mean boing 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 there's no need to build argument it's so easy so clear even those who make videos to refute me they say christian prince the word nukah have two meaning. One of them, it's a physical action of the effort, and the other one mean marriage. Have you ever heard of such a thing? The same word mean to F you, and the same word mean to marry you? Look how so good the Arabic. So which one we say now? Go right now to any Muslim chat room. Tell them I want to do nikah to you. They will bounce you right away. If the word mean marriage, they will why they will be upset. They will, why they will start cursing you? Just go in there and say, I want to do nikah. Let us see what will happen. They will start saying the effort to you right away. Because they knew that the word nikah does not mean to marry. It means boing, boing, boing. Do we have any Mohammedan from the boing, boing religion? Hmm? Any Muslim, proud Muslim, huh? Not even a single proud Muslim. What the heck? None of you is willing to fight for the sake of Allah and get your extra size penis. Look like you are not really convinced with the promise of Allah. Hmm. Oh, Lord have mercy. Anyone have a question? I have a question, please, if that is okay. I heard you say Islam exists before Ishmael. Please, can you explain that? What do you mean Islam exists before Ishmael? I never said that. What Islam is exists before Ishmael? First of all, there is no religion that's called Islam to be exist or not. You see, the word Islam means surrender. So it's an action Muhammad he did in order to force people to follow him. So he command, if you surrender, you live. But the religion itself name is not Islam. There's not such a thing. Islam is an action you do by surrendering to the army of Muhammad or you die. That's why Muhammad says, Aslim Taslam. So Islam is not a name of a religion. This is number one. And never was. Number two, even though the Quran says so, that Islam, but what it's meant there is to surrender to Muhammad, to the devil. Not to submit. There's a huge difference between submit and surrender. You might hear some Christians like David Wood or some others ignorant who do not know Arabic saying that Islam means to submission or submission, which is false. Islam means surrender and surrender only and physically to the sword. And we can find that in the Quran actually in two seconds. If we go right now and we check what happened to the Bedouin, to the Arab, it says that the Bedouin, they said, we believe. Muhammad said to them, Allah told me to say to you, you believe not, but you only should say, we surrender. Why they don't believe? Because they surrender. You know, somebody surrender by sword, he is not a believer. He is a person who being forced to surrender. So if you go here in the Quran, it says, chapter 48. Actually, we have Lili Dawa explain that when he was speaking about the hooker under tits. He said under tits is the same as what the Quran says. He is not a believer. He surrender. So here you will see that Muhammad, he made a threat to the Bedouin Arab. And he said to them, if you don't convert, I will kill you all. I will kill you all. 
And then when those people convert, they said we are believers. In chapter 49, verse number 14, the response to them says, the desert Arab say, we believe, say, you have no, you have no faith. You only say, we surrender, not submit. That's a false translation. In fact, if you change the translator, you will see the word surrender right away. And this is what Islam is about. It's about surrendering after losing war. Convert or die. See here it says submit, false translation. How they are submit is something you do willingly, not somebody forcing you. And the verse is so clear. They don't believe. They don't. They surrender. In fact, here in this translation, it's coming correct. Say only, we have surrender. You see it? That is Islam. Going back to your statement about Islam exists before Ishmael, I never say such a thing. Maybe you got me wrong. In fact, I was saying the Arab, according to Muslims, exist before Ishmael. So what does Islam have to do with the Arab? Do you think the Arab are Islam? Arab is people of the desert who exist before Islam and after Islam. So Ishmael, according to Muslims, came to Arabia and he married from the tribe of Jurham, which is the enemy of Muhammad tribe. Therefore, how Muhammad even can be from Ishmael. However, this is absolutely false. If you go to Genesis chapter 21, verse number 21, you will see that Ishmael, he married from Egyptian women. And he went back to Egypt. He never went to Arabia. So, according to Islam, the Arab exists before Ishmael. So how Ishmael can be the father of the Arab? This is what I said. I hope I answered you. Do we have any Muhammadan? Any Muhammadan? The Quran is in Aramaic or Arabic? Well, the Quran today is in Arabic, but like look like they send, you know, reading the Quran carefully uh, and understanding that Arabic is not even a language. Arabic is just a, let us say, a developed process of other languages, especially the Aramaic. So, Possibly that the original Quran was an Aramaic. But we cannot confirm that unless we can find a copy of something like that. <clears throat> Why so many graves? Sajid, don't call me. Don't force me to block you, Sajid. I will block you. Trust me. Don't spoil yourself too much. Don't spoil yourself. If I don't say call me, you cannot call me. In fact, I'm going to block you right away. Don't do that, guys, with me. If you are a kid and you want to act like a kid, I will treat you like a kid. Did I say you can call me? Did I say Christians can call me? No. I said if you are a Muslim, call me. How many angels in Islam? Allah knows best because Allah himself do not know. <laughs> what angels? <laughs> you know, actually the word the angel in Islam is laughable because according to Islam, those so-called angels are a bunch of liars. Don't you remember the story where Allah, he challenged the angels if they are telling the truth to tell the names of those things? Do you remember? So how they are angels? I mean, if the God of Islam accused the angels to be a bunch of flowers, so why we call them angels? In fact, if you ask Muslim what the word angels mean, they do not know. They don't know. Like Muslims, what malaika mean? Just to show you the stupidity of this religion. Who is a Muslim can tell me what the word malaika mean? Malaika, which is the word in Arabic for angels. They don't know. They have no idea. This cult didn't know anything. They did not know why their God, his name is Allah. They didn't know why their God have angels, their name is Jibreel. What Jibreel mean? They do not know. They didn't know. Israfil, what Israfil mean? They don't know. 
Mikael, they don't know. Okay, Israel, they don't know. They don't know. For this is a leftover religion. It's like a, you know, a, 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 a dead body in the in the field. A dog ate some. A wolf ate some. A hyena bite some. A pig ate some. And then the leftover came to Muhammad. And Muhammad now he do not know this body was for what. So he started giving it names from other beliefs. Even Isa. What is Isa? Who is Isa? According to Muhammad, there's a guy, his name is Isa, his mother is Mary, and his uncle is Moses, and his grandfather is Omran. <laughs> what a messed up history. Who is this guy? So Omran, the father of Moses, become the father of Mary? I mean, what Muhammad is suffering from? Look like he learned history from Joe Biden, you know the thing? So when the when the Jewish rabbi he came to Aisha and he said to her, "Listen, Aisha, Ayush, your husband he making poopoo for Aaron. This is according to the supposedly the, the Jewish rabbi now is smart. So he said, according to the story, I see there is between them six hundred years for sure. This is false. The number is very wrong. But this is what he said in the hadith: six hundred years. Aisha she said to the rabbi, liar, liar." <laughs> The rabbi said, oh, okay, okay, you know, the prophet, you know, best, okay, they take it, uh, salam alaikum, salam, shalom, shalom, shalom. So the guy, he ran away because he, and she will eat him alive, you know. She will come, she will tell her husband, he will send some terrorists to kill him. But now, Muhammad, he learned what, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what the rabbi said. So he want to fix it. So he said, um... Uh, at that time, they used to call them by their great prophets. <laughs> but Mary, she had nothing to do with Aaron. What a great prophet. And who is, if Aaron is the great prophet, so who is Moses? <laughs> oh, sister of Aaron. And look, look at the Muslim translation. Oh, sister of Aaron, not the brother of Moses. Look, look, what the heck? This is not the brother of Moses? <laughs> Do you see at the line, the translation? In Arabic, it says clearly, Ya Ukhta Harun. And the Hadith and Muhammad confirm that he was speaking about Aaron, the brother of Moses. In the translation, he says, not the brother of Moses. Okay, brother? The, no, no, this is not the... But he is a brother, biased brother. He's a biased brother. He's a biased brother. What a bunch of corrupt religion. Even your tafsir get you busted. This translation of who? Who, who? Hilali Khan? What a scumbag you are. Oh. <laughs> Any Abdul? Hmm? So, Maryam, because Muhammad is a fraud, he was confused about another woman. Her name is Maryam. And yes, Aaron, he have a sister. Her name is Maryam. So, the stupid Muhammad, because he's a fraud, he thought that Maryam, the sister of Aaron, is the mother of Jesus. And now, Jesus become the nephew of Moses. And the stupid Muhammad, he could not fix it anymore. Why? Because he made a chapter, it's called the chapter of Ali Amran, chapter number three in the Quran. Amran, not even the name is wrong. He should say Amran, not Amran. But the idiot donkey Muhammad, he do not know even how to repeat the name. So now Muhammad suddenly he claimed that Amran, the father of Moses, is the father of Mary. And now the poopoo becomes so big, glued everywhere. You know, Muhammad is the same as a, I don't know how to describe it for you. I'm trying to use like a polite description using my uh, funny English. Okay. There is a, a prophet of Allah. His name is Muhammad. He heard that the Western, they discover something, it's called fan. You hit the bomb, electricity run in it, and the fan will go crazy. 
So Muhammad, he decided to dry his anus in front of that fan. But it happened that when he did that, he had a diarrhea. So you can imagine what happened. The fan is on, the area is in action, and it's all over the place. So the stupid Muhammad, he tried to fix it about Aaron is the sister of Mary, but now it was deeper because now he made it clear that Umran is the father of Mary. I and mean, how in the world you can clean the diarrhea from the fan? It is impossible. So now they stuck with a chapter. It's called the chapter of Ali Umran. The whole chapter is about Ali Umran. Who are they? Moses, Aaron, Mary, and Jesus. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm coughing. This has happened always when I speak about the area. Look at this, look. And you know, the father of, uh, the father of uh, uh, Mary, you know, uh, he didn't want to care for Mary. He, you know, Zachariah is the one who cared. Her. If you ask Muslims, who is Zachariah? <laughs> he Muslim, what Zachariah mean? I mean, your stupid religion is based on names. And you Muslims, like I saw a Muslim saying, that the Christian uh, God name is a pagan name. You know, when they say the uh, uh, Yahweh, they say this is a pagan name. But do you see Zechariah? This is the name of God in the Bible. You see it? This is taken from the name of God. So the Muhammadan, when they stole names from our book, yet we cannot find the name of their God in our book. And we cannot find the name of our God in their book. But then those names expose Islam to be false. Because if we check what Zechariah mean, you will see that this name contained the God, the name of the God of the Christians. But this name cannot be found in Islam. Same as John or Yahya. Same as Israel. Same as Mikhail. Same as Gabriel. All those our names belong to the God of the Bible. <coughs> How does Muhammad decide who relate to who? Muhammad, he heard from the Jews stories and he don't know really, he's ignorant. Even the Muslims agree that Muhammad was illiterate. But you know, the Quran speak about Muhammad as illiterate. It's not about him being, uh, not knowing how to write, how to read, but he is illiterate about the book. And we can prove it in two seconds. See, Muslims are the last one who can explain their book. So if you go, like the word illiterate in the Quran is ummi. Ummi. Ummi does not mean really illiterate in the way of writing or reading. Ummi mean gomai. From the nations. The one who don't have a book which means not the Christians, not the Jews, are Ummi. This is why we see in chapter 2, verse number 78, it says, from between them, the Ummi, not the Jews, this is false, who know not the book. So those who do not know the book are Ummi. Gomai. Chapter 3, verse number 20, it says the same. The people of the book and the Ummi. The people of the book and the Ummi. So in the Quran, you will see that the Quran differentiate between those who have the scriptures and those who they are illiterate. Why the Quran call them illiterate Ummi? Because they are not from the people of the book. So the word Ummi has nothing to do with knowing how to write, how to read. It's about having the scriptures or not. And Muhammad is from al ummiyin which means he is from the pagan. So even the Quran witness that Muhammad is nothing but a pagan man, son of a pagan man, son of a pagan woman. <coughs> I hope I answered you. Do we have any Muslim dare to call us? May they, may they. How do you do? We laugh at Muhammad, we laugh at you. Prove us wrong. 
Hey, by the way, I heard that there's a lot of scientific discovery in the Quran. As an example, there is a dam. And behind the dam, there's Gog and Magog. And this dam making a lot of Muslims leave Islam. Ask Yasser Qad. But then you know we're gonna find Gog and Magog. <laughs> Can we delete this verse from the Quran to save the nation from apostasy? We cannot find such a dam. A dam made from copper. And you know, like, is it really impossible? Or it is possible? Is it impossible that Allah, he hide the people of Gog and Mago? No, it's not impossible. Is it possible? Uh, listen, listen to this, listen to this. This is uh, Dr. Yasser Qadi, refuting Dr. Yasser Qadi. Before and after. So if somebody were to say, how can we believe these hadith when Google Earth has mapped the whole world? We can zoom in and see everything around us. And there is no massive land hidden from mankind. The response is, Wallahu ala kulli shayin qadir. Allahu a'lam. If we believe in the ahadith, Allahu this is... a'lam. Allah knows best. That's it, so. How come we cannot find it? Allahu a'lam. Is it possible that there is nations by trillions of numbers, trillion by the way, not billions, because According to Muhammad, each one of those Gog and Magog, before he die, he make 1,000 baby. 1,000 baby for one human, which means each time a human he make one baby, Gog and Magog person, he make 1,000 baby. So imagine now, after all those thousands of years, how many trillions of Gog and Magog, and they are behind the dam. And now the question is, where is the dam? May Allah damn you. When Google Earth has mapped the whole world, we can zoom in and see everything around us. And there is no massive land hidden from mankind. The response is, Wallahu ala kulli shayin qadir. Allahu a'lam. If we believe in the ahadith, this is what the ahadith tell us. This is what the ahadith tell us. And there is a simple rule that Ibn Taymiyyah mentions. Memorize this rule. The Quran and memorize. Sunnah does not bring the impossible but it does bring that which astounds the mind. Ah. Is it impossible that somewhere underground Allah has thousands of people living? No. It's not impossible. It's no. not impossible. It's not surprising that our medieval scholars believe this type of stuff. Now, obviously, dare I say, anybody who knows science and geography and modern civilization, you cannot believe, you cannot believe that there is <laughs> a tribe for 4,000 years trapped behind a wall. I mean, if you believe this, any that's your position. I, I cannot believe it. I, I cannot believe it. I'm just being, I cannot, I, I find this very difficult to believe. Potato, a second ago you said it's not impossible. And what happened? A second ago it was not impossible. A second after it's impossible. Everything around us. And there is no massive land hidden from mankind. The response is, Wallahu ala kulli shayin qadir. Allahu a'lam. If we believe in the ahadith, this is what the ahadith tell us. This is what the ahadith tell us. And there's a simple rule that Ibn Taymiyyah mentions. Memorize this rule. The Quran and Sunnah does not bring the impossible, but it does bring that which astounds the mind. Astounding. Is it impossible that somewhere underground Allah has no. thousands of people living? It's not impossible. It's no. not impossible. It's not surprising that our medieval scholars believe this type of stuff. Obviously, Dare I say, anybody who knows science and geography and modern civilization, you cannot believe, you cannot believe that there is a tribe for 4,000 years trapped behind a wall. I mean, if you believe this, yani, yani. that's your position, I, I cannot. You know, if you believe this, yani, you are a donkey, just to make it simple. If you, yani, brother, yani, 
يعني uh, if you believe that there is a wall made from copper and iron and it exists there since Alexander the Great and there is behind it endless numbers of creatures who they are anti-human if you believe in that يعني, you know you are you are monkey donkey you know يعني. but this is the same guy he says in a previous video he believe it يعني, huh? you see why Islam is so stupid where we can find this damn may Allah damn you the dumb 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 now I know where the Pink Panther music came from it was from the dam of Gorga Mago the dumb the dumb the dumb the dumb okay that that is teach you how to say the hamburger damn burger I was wondering where is the damn burger coming from the woman she said to him say hamburger is it hamburger in a hamburger uh, uh, the hamburger okay we quit no 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 we don't quit we don't quit we don't quit we don't quit uh, the hamburger so the god of islam he built a damn burger made of copper and iron and he put behind it the people of gog and magog and this is supposedly the scientific order of discovery of history and Alexander the Great, he was called the man with the two horn because when he told his people to convert to Islam, they hit him in his head with the hammer and he got the first horn. I saw that in the cartoon. I swear by Allah. Like boing. They hit him in his head, Tom and Jerry, if you remember. Tom, he hit Jerry in his head. And then there's like a pimple coming out. Boing, 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 boing. And this is what happened to Zulkarnay. Have you ever heard of a man, his name, the guy with the two horn? Why? I mean, he don't have first name. He don't have last name. What about his mama? She is a cow. What is dad name? The guy with the tail or coat tail. I mean, you can't even get the name of the guy. What the guy with the two horn? Who is that? The Quran author is must be true God. Otherwise, how he found out about the man with the two horn? Remember, he didn't say three horn. That would be a problem. If it's three horn, it's two only. Thank to Allah. According to scientific discoveries by Japanese scientist, very well known. His name Yama Suzuki I do lie Yama Toyota. Very well known. He said that they discover in Japan, which is in Brazil, next to Argentina, in the land of Zimbabwe, by the Babylon River, that there was a guy, he had two horns. His wife, she had two boobs. And the reason he had two horns, because he lost his hand. So how he will play with his wife boobs? Allah gave him horn. This is why it says there later she become horny. Because he used his two horn to play with her boobs. So let us put the information together. A guy he have two horn, he have no hands, and she have two boobs. He play with her boobs with his two horn, she become horny. Do you want more evidence than this? By the way, this is a story I just created myself. Don't ask me for reference. <laughs> Unbelievable. I don't know where I got those stories from. I mean, my brain sometimes it can bring me something. Do you think, guys, I'm qualified to be Prophet Muhammad sometime? What horn and horny and boobs? What the heck was that? It must be Jibreel. He inspired me. What the heck? Do we have any Muslim here tell us why people are leaving Islam because of those stories? Do you believe in those stories really? I'm sure you do. Hmm. <laughs> you try to call me Mashir? 
Mashir, you are just a Shantir liar. My Skype is open and there is no way. Oh, hold on, hold on. I see your name. Hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on. I'm going to call you. Yeah, you are right. You are not lying. Guys, Mashir, he tried to contact me. Correct. I'm calling him right now. Okay, Mashir, answer, answer. Mashir. Answer. You see, I'm calling you. Answer, buddy. What the heck? You don't want to answer? What? Why are you not answering? Let me call you again. Maybe mama should not allow you to answer? <laughs> answer, buddy. Answer, I will block you. Potato. All right, let me block you. Coward. Potato, 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 in here we black the skin, in here we fry it in, in here we cook Allah, in here say mashallah, Allah he look like an idiot, Muhammad look like a fool, and no one got there to kill us, and Abdul, potato, 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 all right, Mashir, got a potato, <coughs> do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us? Who is a brave Mohammedan? He can tell us where we can find Gog and Magog. Is it true that Gog and Magog, they are located in the White House? Is it true that Ivanka Trump, she knew the map? Is it accurate that The American Congress, they are hiding Gog and Magog. Is it possible that the emperor of Japan, he bought the land of Gog and Magog so he can play golf? Is it true that Bill Gates, he found Microsoft software in the land of Gog and Magog? Is it possible that Elon Musk, he is from the people of Gog and Magog? Is it true that Lady Gaga is from the Gaga land? That's why she go naked and she is wicked? Muslims, the Quran tell a lot of true stories. And all stories lead to Allah. <coughs> I have a friend who said you were lying, but he does not debate you. Okay, he proved me wrong then. <laughs> all right. Guys, uh, uh, this person, he have a friend, uh, told him that I'm lying, but he don't want to debate me. Obviously, I'm lying then. <laughs> Do we have any Abdul? Who's Abdul here? Potato. So you lie. You made Isa. You made your Isa. Isa is a Palestinian. The Quran says he's a Jew. What's wrong with you, Muslims? You think by making a, a, a Jesus Palestinian you get support? Good luck with that. 
Don't you know that the one who supports you, they are the homosexual? Christians will not support you. Those people don't care anyway about God. Uh, do we have any Muslim? Who is a person is a Muslim? Shout out CP from the Philippines. Okay, what? Okay, you are from the Philippines. What shout out mean? Secondly, prove to me that you are not from the Philippines. How come you don't have a picture in your icon of a balut? How in the world now I will believe that you are a Filipino? There's no balut in your reference. Get you busted. Like me as an example, how what is the proof that I'm an Arab? I have my suicide belt. Hey, 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 see? I have reference. My cousins, look at them. All of them, they are terrorists. If you are a Filipino, do you have a balut? You don't have a balut? Thank you very much. You are not a Filipino. Obviously, you are from Singapore. How I know? You have a microphone in your icon and you are singing. That's why they call it Singapore. Sing poor. Like what? You know, like sing for the poor. Because at that time, Singapore was poor. So they sing, you know, like you go in the street, everybody's singing like, la, 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 like what? what? What are you doing? Because this is how they make money at that time. Everybody in Singapore, they have a nice voice, you know? That's why they call them Singaporean. Not Singapore, ah. Like Bora, Tora Bora, no. Anyway, so like after they start singing, the money will start coming from everywhere. And uh, Singapore became so rich and uh, uh, they became Singaporean. All the history in the world, I learned about it from Prophet Muhammad. Any one of you dare to say to me I'm wrong? Who dare? Who dared to say I'm wrong? No. <clears throat> like once I, I wrote a word in the Arabic exam, and the teacher, he was waiting for me to make a mistake. And this teacher, he hit me to death, man, because always I get him busted. So he came to the classroom, <laughs> said, <laughs> look at this guy, look, look. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Said me. He said, yeah, you, you, you. <laughs> stand up, stand up. <laughs> he said, guys, listen, listen, listen. This guy, he claim always that he knows. He claim always that he is a smart. And then anyway, so he starts saying, he, but he is a stupid. He is donkey. Look how he wrote the word. Look, look at this. Even a kid, even a stupid kid, will not write it this way. <laughs> <laughs> and I was smiling. He said, look, look, look. Even he's smiling, he don't care. You don't care, you don't care. You don't even have a, a, a sense of shame. You don't care, don't you? And then after he finished supposedly insulting me for 15 minutes, I said, sir, this is how the word written in the Quran. <laughs> you should see his face. The guy, the second I said, this is how it is written in the Quran, you can see his, his star shaking, his face became yellow. He was saying, uh, uh, actually, he, he's, he's right. Uh, this is the correct way to write it. I was trying to find out who of you will notice that this is the correct way. He's right, he's right. And he was looking at me, he want to kill me. You know, like He was like, well, like, I got him badly, you know. And not only that, the ring for the class is over, so we have to go home. It was the last class uh, 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 in the day, he closed the door and he did not let us go because he wanted to explain that he didn't mean it. I was right, you know, he, he, because he insulted whoever write it this way. He called me donkey for writing it this way. And now it is in the Quran this way. So he wanted to explain that this is, he was right. I didn't mean it. I was just trying to test you. What a potato. And then when the student left, he came to me, he says, you are the devil. And said, and I said to him, and you are the idiot. I got you. Oh boy. This is how it is written in the Quran, you donkey. Wrong. And he's right, by the way. It's wrong. But this is how it is in the Quran. <laughs> Do we have any Abdul? I use always to make fun of those teachers. You know? This is why I used to be fired every almost every week like twice twice three times sometime i get i get you know actually i don't want to talk about it now people will think about me in a bad way i better hide my history in school 
Do we have any Abdul? Anyone? Bill Clever, you are glad you catch me live? Like why usually you catch me dead? What do you mean? Uh, do you have any Mohammedan would like to join us? Last call, last call, mayday, mayday. Anyone? Anyone? Okay, any two. I take you two. No? No, Muslims. All right, maybe next time we go live, we can take some Christian calls so we can finish our Christian Christmas occasion. <clears throat> I want to ask you about the hadith, how they validate authority and authenticity. Okay? Well, all the way the Muslim they validate things is false because simply none of them was there, how you can validate anything. So somebody came a few hundred years after Muhammad and he said that this hadith report according to, according to, according to, but he never saw any of those people. So how you know that that person he really mentioned what they claim? So what the Muslim method of uh, so-called validating is absolutely false and a fraud. The same for the Quran. The Quran, they have today, the most popular one, uh, the Quran of Hafs. Hafs, the person, is exists 200 years after Muhammad. And Hafs was well known to be a thief. Even the Muslims, they have books written about him that he is a fraud. And to the point, even they don't accept any of his hadith, which means anything he mentioned as a hadith, is not accepted. So how we accept the Quran from him? They refuse any hadith from him because supposedly he's a fraud. So how you accept the Quran? And this is a person who came 200 years after Muhammad. So how you accept according to, according to, according to, according to, more than 12 names, and then 200 years after Muhammad, you claim that this is the Quran, which means they don't have a Quran, not a single page of it. They have recitation according to Hafs. They don't even have writing of Hafs. <clears throat> Just to add more information to your knowledge. Al-Bukhari itself, the most so-called authentic books of Islam, is not exist. Sahih Muslim, the second in the list, is not exist. There is no Sahih Muslim. There is not a single book written by Sahih Muslim. There is no single book written by Al-Bukhari. So how Al-Bukhari is the most authentic, but they don't have any books of Al-Bukhari. What they have is, according to the students of Al-Bukhari, Al-Bukhari said. Are you getting my point? So we are talking about hundreds of years after Muhammad. Islam is a zero authentic sources. Zero. <laughs> All right. Do we have enough for today? I think so. Shall we finish for now? Any Muslim? Last call. Is it true that Muslim women should circumcise? It is true. Yes. They do circumcise them so the women, they will not get horny and they will not seek a desire. Only men, they can seek desire. This is why Muslim women, they never, hear, they never have orgasm. This is why Muhammad, the story, if you remember, uh, when, when a Muslim woman, she is a new convert, which means she still have her clitoris, is not cut yet. She come to Muhammad and she spoke about herself masturbating. And she spoke about herself having orgasm. The wife of Muhammad, she said to Muhammad, do women have orgasm? Do women? have orgasm he said yes otherwise how the baby looked like his parents which is again proving Muhammad to be a stupid fool because what orgasm have to do with the baby look or being a male or female <clears throat> and we can show you the reference so the wives of Muhammad never ever had orgasm And if the Muslim don't want to agree that this is because they circumcise their vagina, then Muhammad do not know how to have sex. Otherwise, you know, do you see it? 
This is the wife of Muhammad questioning. Do women even discharge? This is the wife of Muhammad herself. You know, when a woman, she say to her husband, do even women do, do this charge? What does that mean? That means she never had this charge. Do you see it? This is the wife of Muhammad herself. She never had orgasm. Never. Either Muhammad penis is not working or Muhammad, he have orgasm after two seconds like a rabbit before she can reach the point of orgasm or Muhammad is doing it in the wrong location you tell me but how the women she's a wife of Muhammad and Muslim they claim that Allah sent him a dish of kebab he ate it he got the power of 40 men yet the man who have the power of 40 men he could not make his wife discharge is it me lying? it's in front of you and this is Al-Bukhari this is Al-Bukhari. You see it? Muhammad could not make his wife's discharge. Never. To the point the wife, she was like, eh? Do women even have discharge? Does a, does a woman get discharged, the wife she said to Muhammad? She never heard of such a thing. So what Muhammad was doing in bed? Muhammad as a prophet, he's very well known that he shoot blank. He have 13 wives, he could not make any of them have babies. So either he shoot blank or he don't shoot at all. In fact, Muhammad himself in the hadith, he said he was the most weak person in intercourse. And then he invoked Allah. And then Allah, he sent him a dish of shish kebab, he ate it, he got the power of 40 men. Now, when you see somebody speaking about getting the power of 40 men, obviously he have no power. Because those who speak too much about their sexual ability is the one who don't have any of it. They speak about it to cover their problem. You know, it's like a person, he's so poor, and he want to show off in the front people who they are so rich. So he start talking about how rich his family, because he keep talking about money and what they own, because simply, his families are very poor. He's trying to, he feel, he feel like he feels short of something in front of those people. So he start making things up stories. And this is exactly the case of Muhammad. He talk about how good he is in sex, but as you see, his wives never had intercourse in the correct way. In the top of that, Muhammad, according to his wives, uh, that Muhammad, he imagined himself having sex. But in fact, he never did so. <clears throat> As you see, the Prophet continued for such and such period, imagining that he had sexual intercourse with his wife. In fact, he did not. Our brother, <coughs> Go Chan, who left Islam, want to call you? Okay, our brother, Go Chan. Did he text me? Did he text me? Uh, I see somebody here. Let us call him. Hello? 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 Mr. Gohan? Well, you have no sound, my friend. You have no sound. Sorry to say, uh, <clears throat> I will try to call you one more time to see if it's going to work.
हेलो 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 राइट टेक केयर गुड फिक्स योर माइक्रोफोन एंड देन मशीर इज सेइंग ही ट्राई टू कॉल मी आई विल कॉल यू वन मोर टाइम मशीर लेट अस सी Do you know any Tagalog word? Sure, I speak Tagalog fluently. I just told you Balut. What's wrong with you? Hello? Talk, Mashir. Talk. <coughs> talk. I mean, we heard your microphone. He hung up. Why you hang up? Why you hang up? Petito, we heard you. Everybody heard your voice. Even we heard that the, you know you are dripping something from your nose. Is that the orgasm of the wife of Muhammad coming to your nose? I told you don't put your nose there. Don't put your nose between the legs of Muhammad's wives. Look what happened to you, nosy nosy. I will call you one more time. Clean your nose, man. Yeah, he's not even online now. Speak Tagalog. I am the one who made Tagalog. That uh, Philippine people do not know Tagalog. The Philippine people in the old days, do you speak? Do used to speak Arabic? I'm telling you. You go to a Philippine, but they say salama, salama. This is Arabic. Uh, so, so I said to them, from now on, don't say that. Say Tagalog, you know. So, like you go in the street now, Tagalog, Tagalog, like you know, Tagalog. Even uh, you know the uh, president, uh, the Tagalog president. Uh, you know, he said to me, so what the language you should speak? I said, uh, you know, look what I did to people of Singapore. They used not to speak any language. They used to sing. So now I am going to make you sing. Don't talk. That's why all Filipinos they sing. I mean, you go anywhere in the Philippines, everybody is singing. Kara okay, you know, like in in marriage they are singing, in funeral they are singing, in the beach they are singing, at eating they are singing, in the kitchen they are singing, in the bathroom they are singing. They sing everywhere. So uh, now Filipinos don't talk no more. They sing, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is the language, the new language of the Philippines, which I taught them. All this information, by the way, you can find it in Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Wiki, wiki, sorry, not Waka. I walk the Abidia all. Do we have any Mohammedan? <clears throat> you guys are asking me questions, very weird questions. <laughs> any Abdul? Are you sure? Yeah, sure, sure. The only uh, Filipino word I remember, <clears throat> once I was taking a bus and the guy, I to he told me, I gave him uh, uh, money. He says, sir, I have to pay you back 44 pesos. I said, how much? He said, 44. I said, okay, say it one more time and keep the money. So he said, 44. I said, okay. Then he came back to me and said, sir, I want me to say it more? I said, no, that's it. That's it, man. 44 pesos. <clears throat> but for sure, the Filipino way is better to say it, you know. Like, I don't know how he say it. <clears throat> 44 pesos. I was like, and the whole bus started laughing when I said to him, say it one more time and give the money. <laughs> I love Filipino people, very nice people. Anyway, but this reminds me of the story, true story, by the way, about Alibaba and the 44 thieves. That is a prophet of Allah. 44 thieves and the cave of the money is to steal from the Christian, the Jews, the Hindus, the Buddhists and hide it there. 44 thieves. Hmm. Do we have any Abdul? <clears throat> Why do you think people get married?
what does this have to do with my topic? What, why do you think people get married? <laughs> people get married for many reasons. Some men, they get married because they want to eat nice food. Some men, they get married because they are being fooled. Some men, they get married because, uh, you know, let us say, like Muhammad, you know, you marry a woman, she is rich. We don't want to work. She is the boss. She make money. Is he sleep in the house? Why are Pakistani so frustrated? I don't agree with you. First of all, there's no reason for anyone from Pakistan to be frustrated. Pakistan is the land of wealth. Everybody happy there. What are you talking about? It's true that Muslim cannot wish us a Merry Christmas. The Muslim want to kill you. And now you are worried about Merry Christmas. Worry about if you will survive. He fixed his microphone. Right, let us try one more time. Well, someone, his name is Arctic, asking me where you live. You got the answer in your name, man. I mean, his name is Arctic. He's asking me where I live. Hello? Hello? But all right, I have, I have to block you, my friend. What I can do? I'm not going to waste my time, keep calling you. Take care. Any Abdul? <clears throat> Anyone? Nobody? All right. Uh, well, I hope we have a good time. Uh, so remember, you know, those people who they claim to be Christian priests in so-called Palestine, they are no Christians. Those are false people. They don't represent us. They don't represent the Christianity. They are hypocrite to the Muslims. If they are truthful, they should say the truth. And the truth is, this is the land of the Jews. And the truth is that the Muslims are occupation. And the truth is that if you are a Christian, you read what the gospel says. That God will gather the children of Israel and give them back their land. If you are a priest, then you should say that this is the land of Jesus. And Jesus is not a Palestinian, neither an Arab. But you are a fraud. And because of that, we expose you. <clears throat> I want to say thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And uh, as an end of this, I leave you in peace. Uh, this is a Christian, Arabic, a Christian song, which is, you know, used in many uh, languages. Uh, we pray the Lord. He will open the eyes of those who they are blind and will not allow <clears throat> any one of us to be deceived by the deception of those people. Their deception is powerful only if you are ignorant. So let us fight ignorance together. Let us expose ignorance together. Don't let the ignorance take over your garden. The person who don't attend his yard the weeds will take over and we are here to clean the yard from the evil weeds god bless you and see you soon again god is good so is jesus and merry christmas <laughs>
نفسي الرب ولا تنسي حسناته باسم الرب أدعو أليلويا فبنا إلى الأبد إلى الأبد رحمته أليلويا أنت رأسي بالطيب وكأس Sorry, I lost my voice speaking for many hours. God bless you and see you soon again. Take care.